In today's video, I'll be creating a pizzeria which was huge in the 80s with the kids. Sadly, it fell victim to fierce competition from a corporate-owned copycat pizzeria, which employed aggressive marketing strategies to crush its popularity. I tried to make this tutorial super simple and easy. I will also explain the parts which need some explaining. So even if you don't know Blender very well, you might be able to follow this pizzeria tutorial. First select the gizmo drop-down menu over here, and turn on move function, then press A to select all, and X to delete. Now press shift plus A and add a mesh plane. Switch to front view and press tab to enter edit mode, E to extrude it up. Then select the left corner vertex, and shift plus S to bring snap pie menu, and select cursor to select it. Back in object mode, add another plane, scale it down in edit mode and extrude it up as well. Now go to modifier properties and add a mirror modifier. And then select the first plane as the mirror object. Now shift select both the objects and shift plus D to duplicate and move it to the left. Inside the edit mode of the cube, press Ctrl plus R to add a new horizontal loop cut and move it up. Then press 3 for face selection. Select the top face and extrude it to the front a bit. Now select the pillar, and with the top face selected press E to extrude, and right click to cancel the movement, then S to scale up a bit, and E to extrude up. Now add a camera to the scene, and then from the view menu, select align view to camera. With G you can move the camera and middle click to zoom. Now split the viewport. And in the second editor, switch to top view. Then select both objects and enter edit mode. Press shift plus Z to enter wireframe view. Then drag over everything on the left to select them. Back in object mode, select the pillar and remove the current mirror object. And instead select the central building as a mirror object. Now select the left building and shift select the pillar. Then I'll copy its mirror modifier. Now in the front view, place the 3D cursor at the center with shift plus right clicking. Then add a plane. Press R90 and X to rotate it 90 degrees on X axis. Scale it down in edit mode and add a vertical loop cut at the center. Then press V to disconnect them. A to select all and I to inset faces. Press 3 for face selection, and then press Ctrl and I to invert the selection, E to extrude it, A to select all and move it to the front. With mouse cursor on the right door, press L to select it, then move it slightly away from the other one. Now add another plane and rotate it 90 degrees on X as well. Then in edit mode right click and subdivide, in operator panel set the subdivision to 8. Then select some horizontal edge loops with Alt and left click. Press X and select Dissolve Edges. And right click and select Unsubdivide. And from Operator Panel, lower the iteration to 1. Now scale down the plane and move it to the left. With Vertex Mode on I can fix the distorted shapes and make them straighter. Now duplicate this plane and move it to the right, then in the modifier properties add a wireframe modifier to it, and lower the thickness. Now with the cursor placed a bit up add a cylinder, press S and Z to scale it down on Z axis, then switch to top view, and then edit mode, with wireframe on, select half part of the cylinder, press X and delete vertices, now select the endpoint vertices on both sides and press F to create a face between them, then alt click, to select top loop, and press F to fill, same thing at the bottom, now back in object mode right click and select shade auto smooth. Again place the cursor a bit above, and add a mesh cylinder, scale it down on Z and then rotate it 90 degrees on X axis, Scale down, and then in edit mode turn on wireframe, select left vertices, and move them to the left, select right vertices, and move them to the right. Now select the front face and I to inset it, then E to extrude a bit inwards. Press 2 for edge selection, and select the extra edge loop at the center. 
Control plus B to bevel it, and scroll to add a segment in between, move the loop down. And then Control B to bevel it as well. Scroll to create multiple segments and create a curvature. Now place the cursor on the board, and add a text object, rotate it 90 degrees on X axis, and scale it down. Then enter edit mode, use backspace to get rid of the default text, and type the name of the pizzeria. In the text properties choose a suitable font, and then scale up or down to fit the board. Under geometry menu there is option to extrude, then lower down the resolution, and also set bevel resolution to zero. Now to edit individual text character, you'll need to right-click, and select convert to mesh, then in edit mode and with wireframe on, select individual characters. Here I will make the first and last characters a bit bigger. Now with the cursor set a little below, add another text object, rotate 90 degrees on x-axis, in edit mode type pizza, then choose a different font for this, and scale it down. Then in text properties lower down the resolution, and bevel resolution to zero, then extrude up a bit. Now duplicate the pizza text and move it down. Then type place. Since I duplicated this one, its text properties are same to the pizza one. I will then remove the pizza font from this one, and then scale it down. Since it was scaled in object mode, press Ctrl A and apply the scale. This will make sure all the modifiers will work properly on it. Now in the text properties, increase the character spacing a bit. Then in the modifier properties, add a simple deform modifier. Here select bend, then axis to Z and increase the angle value to make the curve, then rotate the text. Bring the snap pie menu, and select cursor to world origin, then add a mesh plane, and scale that up. Now add another plane, then E to extrude up a bit, Shift plus D to duplicate and right click, E to extrude that up as well. Back in object mode, select both the buildings and tab to enter their edit mode, then press Shift plus Z to turn on wireframe. Now select the top corner vertices and move them down a bit to get a more 3D look. Now duplicate the central building and move it to the back, scale up on x-axis, and then in its edit mode move the top face up. Don't worry about creating any roof for this, we will make the scene very dark, we might not even see this block. Now change the shading of the first editor to rendered, and in the render properties change the render engine to cycles, and set the device to GPU. Control plus B and drag over the camera region. So that gets rendered only for now, lower down the viewport samples. And then in world properties, set the strength to zero. Now let's add an area light in the scene and move it up on Z axis. In the light properties increase the size, and lower down the light strength. Now duplicate the light, and move it down near the door. Lower down its size, and lower down the light power as well. Now select the central building, and then in material properties add a new material. Choose a base color. Now add a horizontal loop cut in the building. Then another one below. Select the bottom face, and add a new material slot. Then hit assign, give this a different color. Do the same thing to the middle face. Now I will create another loop cut above, and then Ctrl plus B to create a face, assign a different material to it, and then a new material to the top face as well. I will fast forward a bit since the process is very similar. Now for this face, which I created with loop cuts, after assigning a new material, 
Instead of picking any color, click on the yellow dot near base color and select checker texture. If you zoom in the first editor, you will see there is an issue here. We don't see any checker pattern currently. If we try to scale in the properties, we do see the pattern, but they aren't uniform. One way to quickly fix it is press U and select unwrap. Then switch to shader editor and with checker node selected, press Ctrl plus T and plug the UV to vector and then adjust the scale as needed. Now select the pillar. And for this one, select a brick texture. The texture has been added, but it's not in the direction we would like, so switch to Shader Editor. And with brick texture selected, press Ctrl plus T. And here we can plug the camera to the vector, so texture is aligned with the camera view. Adjust the scale, and change the brick colors. With the location sliders you change brick positions, however I will keep this at zero. Now I will copy this material to the other pillar as well. Add material to the building at the back. Now I will place the cursor at the center of the pillar and add a simple cube, then scale it down and add a new material to it. Under surface, select emission. Then in the color, I will select black body. I will set the temperature at 2500, and then the strength at 3, then add a mirror modifier to it, and set the central building as the mirror object. Now select the main text object, and give it an emission material. But instead of settling for a plain emission material, I will give this something extra. So switch to shader editor, and add a gradient texture. Plug color to color. The gradient is working but there is nothing to control it. So drop a color ramp node in between. And you can control the gradient with the sliders. Now instead of the gradient going sideways, I need it to happen vertically. So with gradient node selected, press Ctrl plus T. And if I turn on gizmo, I can see that the rotation has to happen on y-axis. So in the y field, type 90. Since it didn't work, press Ctrl plus A in the first editor, and apply rotation and scale. Now you can add colors on the color ramp node. Then I will also set the strength to 2. Now select the pizza, and give this an emission material as well. For color, I will pick something greenish. Then add emission to the place text as well. Now add a simple diffuse material to the board. And then in its edit mode, add a loop cut in between. And select the face loop. And assign a material to it. I will select the emission material previously used, then add another loop inside, bevel that loop a tiny bit, and assign the diffuse material to it. Back in object mode, place the cursor on top, and add a cube, scale that down, add an emission material to it, then under color, select black body, and strength to 3. Now Alt plus D to duplicate, and place the copies along the edges. Now to create the mascot of the pizzeria, place the cursor above the board, and add image as plain. From the file browser, select the teddy bear image, and import it. If you are unable to see anything in render view, switch that to material preview. And then in edit mode, add a loop cut. And delete the unnecessary part. Now switch the first editor back to rendered view and then the second one to Shader Editor. Add an Emission Shader, then a Mix Shader, and drop it between the principled BSDF and the Material Output. Plug the Emission to the bottom Shader Input. 
then the color from image to the color on emission. Then alpha to the factor input in mix shader. And finally, lower down the alpha slider to zero. Now I will add another plane here. Scale that down in edit mode. And then scale up on X axis. Add multiple vertical loop cuts. Use scroll wheel to increase the number of cuts. Then add one horizontal loop. Now press 3 for face selection. And then A to select all. In the select menu above select checker deselect. First add material to the whole mesh. Then back in edit mode, assign a new material to the selection. And we will give it an emission material. Now after all done, go to render properties, and down in the color management, select view to standard and look to high contrast. Now before rendering the image, lower down the render samples for faster render, and make sure denoise is turned on. Save the project before rendering, so if something goes wrong while rendering, you have your whole blend project intact. After saving, render the image. Once done, save the image so you can share it to the world. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, leave a like and comment something to help the channel.